Welcome to Learnpedia, the 24 by 7 JE and NEAT resource at your fingertips. Now let's see if you can answer this actual JE question. If you think you got the answer, post it in the comment section below. To understand the concept behind this question, go ahead and watch this video. Now let's discuss completely about the energy levels in the molecular orbitals. There are two types of energy level diagrams. For molecules up to nitrogen, that is B2 molecule, C2 molecule, N2, etc., where the difference in energies between 2s and 2p orbitals is small and where they can interact, the order of filling of orbitals, that is molecular orbitals, is like this. The one which is having the lowest energy, that is sigma 1s, then comes sigma star 1s. We know that out of the two molecular orbitals formed by the combination of the 1s orbitals, one is the bonding and other one is the anti-bonding. And the bonding molecular orbital has energy as lower energy than that of the anti-bonding molecular orbital. And again we know that when compared to 1s orbital, 2s orbitals has higher energy. So then comes sigma 2s which is less than sigma star 2s. And after 2s we get 2p orbitals. And here we took z axis as the reference. And whenever we are taking z axis as the reference, the 2pz orbitals form the sigma orbital. And the remaining 2 forms the pi orbitals. So now the order is like this. After sigma star 2s, it is pi 2px which is equal to pi 2py. What is the meaning of equal to here? It means the energy of the pi 2px orbital and pi 2py orbital is the same. And we call these kind of orbitals as degenerate orbitals. The orbitals which possess the same energy. Then after this comes the sigma 2pz orbital and which is less than the pi star 2px which is equal to pi star 2py less than sigma star 2pz. So the previous part of the entire concept, it's only the concept related to this particular molecular orbital theory. But majority of the questions, we get it from this point only. How to write the molecular orbital configuration, how to make the diagram, what is that information we get from the diagram. So that is the major part of this particular session. Please do concentrate more. So what I am explaining here is, up to nitrogen, this is the order. For answering majority of the questions on this particular topic, we need to learn the order of the energy of the various molecular orbitals. So unless this is clear, we can't work out any objectives. See here, 1s orbital and 1s orbital, whenever combining, we get sigma 1s and sigma star 1s. This is the increasing order of the energy of these orbitals. Then 2s and 2s, whenever combining, we are getting sigma 2s and sigma star 2s. When the 2p orbitals are involved, so first in this particular case, the energy of pi 2px which is equal to pi 2py, that is less than the sigma 2pz. And then comes the pi star 2px which is equal to pi star 2py and last it comes sigma star 2pz. That is the case for the molecules up to nitrogen. Now what is the second type? For molecules after nitrogen, that is like O2, F2, etc where the energy difference between the 2s and 2p orbitals is large and where they can interact, the order of filling is slightly different. Of course, the first one is the same. Sigma 1s less than sigma star 1s. What will be the next one? That is sigma 2s. Then comes sigma star 2s. So up to here, it is same in both the cases. And the difference comes at this particular point. In the previous type, that is up to nitrogen, what is next after sigma star 2s? It is pi 2px. Means, this is the only point of difference in between both of them. So, this is the one very very important where you need to understand. Up to nitrogen, this comes here and this comes here. But here it is just opposite. So, after sigma star 2s, next comes sigma 2pz. 
which is less than pi 2 p x which is equal to pi 2 p y and which is less than pi star 2 p x which is equal to pi star 2 p y which is less than sigma star 2 p z. As we had learned the energy of the orbitals based on the Hofbau principle how to fill the electrons in the orbitals the same pattern in order to fill the electrons into molecular orbitals we need to understand both of them up to nitrogen it is in one way and after nitrogen it is in the other way now the electrons are filled in these molecular orbitals according to the same principles which we had learned in atomic structure one is the Hofbau principle what is Hofbau principle electron always enter into the orbitals of lowest energy what is Hund's rule whenever degenerate orbitals are available pairing of electrons takes place only when all the orbitals are filled with one electron each then what is Pauli's exclusion principle any orbital can accommodate maximum of two electrons and that too with opposite spin or in another way no two electrons can have the same set of all four quantum numbers and that from there we can conclude that any orbital can accommodate a maximum of two electrons with opposite spin. Then from this molecular orbital configurations we can also know the information related to the magnetic properties. How can we know? In any of the configuration if there are unpaired electrons then definitely we can say that is paramagnetic in nature because we know that paramagnetic property is due to the presence of unpaired electrons. When all the electrons are paired up then that particular molecule or ion that is diamagnetic in nature. So that is about the information which we get from the molecular orbital configuration as well as from the bond order. Hey there, hope you understood the concept. Here's the solution to the question asked at the beginning. Hit the bell icon below and subscribe to our Learnpedia channel to learn more through such interesting videos. Learnpedia's JE and NEED prep tools contain over 4,000 videos and over 20,000 questions. They are accessible online on our website and also offline through an SD card or a pen drive. To buy now, visit www.learnpedia.in. You can also try a free demo of our product before purchase.